Project Greenlight is an internet contest. We pick a script, we pick a director, we let somebody get a chance to make their movie. This time we want to make a horror movie. Feast is a very scary movie. It's Evil Dead meets Diner. This year we have a fantastic director, John Gulliger. It's been over 35 years getting here. Hopefully he's going to pay off. Now it's up to Marcus, Patrick, and John to make a terrific movie. It's the first day of shooting, and basically everything's been leading to this day. I'm going to find out myself after the first day uh, how exhilarating or disappointing it is. That's always kind of the test. It's like the first day of school. Is this script even possible to pull off in 25 days? I would be the last person to, to tell you what's possible. I'm the person that hasn't done it before. All right, let's go. 70 people show up at a stage in Silmar with all eyes turned to John Gulliger. It is pretty much a disaster if you don't finish what you set out to shoot on the first day. You, you're sort of just thinking about the first shot. You know, you actually have to you know, accomplish a certain amount of work. Well, today's the day. Don't f it up. <laughs> yeah. I did feel the weight of how much work it's going to be with the effects um, and the time we have. I have to shake their hand at least once this morning. Before you slap me? Before I slap you. Yeah, it's, 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 it's. We're up against this unreasonable schedule. And my big fear is that John just isn't used to working with any deadlines. I'll be yelling at you all day. Yeah. Hurry up, but hurry up. Knock him dead, dude. My name is Ben Ormond, and I'm the line producer on Feast. Ultimately, my job is about making sure we make days. We scheduled our work and that we get our work done. Because the only way you can make a movie. One of the things that's nerve wracking for a director on that first day is knowing that you are the guy that they're looking to, to see if you're a leader, to see if, you're, if, you, if, you, if you got the stuff. First shot, the gun falls on the ground. Second, picks it up. That's it. The assistant director's job is to make sure that the actors are in front of the camera at a specific time and that the day's work is complete. Okay, guys, we're gonna try a rehearsal here. Right, try it right now. Careful, some of the set dressing there, Diane. Drop the gun. First thing we're shooting today is Harley Mom in the bathroom getting ready to rob the bar. Diane's the very first shot that could help alleviate some of the nerves. And I also want to get a um, smoking, a lighting, a crack pipe kind of thing. We have a crack pipe? <clears throat> Find out. Okay. If not, I got one in my car. Good. Yeah. It's day one of principal photography. Showed up on set to a little surprise already. And apparently now there's a crack pipe component to this. Mm -hmm. Is there a problem with drugs? There's a problem with drugs, and there's also a problem in not knowing that before we actually start the day. That would be, you know, an interesting, you know, kind of, you know, sort of cinema thing, you know. So I didn't think it was a big deal. You see, can't yeah. just come up on a day because the schedule's built. There's a little improvisation that goes into every film, but on a schedule like this, improvisation is a very scary prospect. Putting a crack pipe into the scene is not just a worry to the studio, it's a challenge for props. It's not something you want to drop on production without warning on day one. So what is she going to be smoking? Any idea? How about if we do both? Like take a take with the pot and, and a take with the crack. We'd have it in the editing room. One day. condition, John. We're going to make our day. Make sure we can just swap it in. Right. And swap it up. And do not f up the take no with, the pot. with the pot. Yeah, and like shake the camera. No okay. sabotage. No, I, don't, I don't do that. It's like already the give and take. Quiet, please. Pictures up. Roll sound and action. I think it's probably going to get worse, but we said, OK, this is going to be a big test for John. Can he add shots? Can he change up his, his plan and still make his day? OK, I'm cutting. Stand by. You guys are moving on. Do we need a shot of the door? Are we going to do I that? I think or? we should pick the door up later. We're in deep doo-doo. We're shooting the hero character in less than 24 hours. We don't have anyone definite, but we're pursuing Mark Wahlberg. What do we need to do to resolve this hero issue? He is on a flight and apparently lands in New York at 12.30 our time. Perfect. In the meantime, we've got this Eric Dane. If you want to see his tape, it's in the other room. 
we picked a backup choice, uh, Eric Dane, who was not a choice I was entirely comfortable with. And he knows he's going to be up to bat if the big gun doesn't work out. We need a hero like yesterday. Actually, four days ago would have been perfect. I've got wardrobe on my tail. I have a dummy body that matches the size and shape of somebody we hire. The glamorous world of movie making. Nothing but constant action and fun here, man. It's quite nerve wracking right now. Roll sign. Very quiet, guys. Pictures up, let's start getting last looks, please. Keep rolling, reset. Ready? <coughs> and action. Cut. Okay, good. I kind of like gonna like that second one. Bathroom floor with a gun. Hey, who could ask for more? Okay, guys, we're moving on. Dan, good. The only backup we have for Hero if Mark Wahlberg doesn't play this part is Eric Dane. Hello, Michelle Gertz. Um, Eric Dane's agent and manager are really pissed. They found out that we're investigating the possibility of Mark Wahlberg, and so now we might not have Eric Dane to play hero, and then we'd have nobody. Granted, Eric knows that he's not Mark Wahlberg, but it's still, it's an ego thing. I don't know how that got that far. I thought I was told to make him an offer. And then an hour later, it's like, wait, Mark Wahlberg. This hero thing is screwed. You never want to go out to an actor with an offer unless it's firm. And now we're in a position of possibly losing our backup. Somehow, someway, it's not going to end up pleasantly for someone. No, I'm sorry, it's a mess. So we're just really in a shitty spot right now, basically. Bye, I'll call you back. All right, bye. <sighs> we have no one. Cut. Oh, How does that jump? Okay, that's <laughs> lunch. Yeah, we're like an hour behind, right? There's something I heard. I think you're completely on time, I've heard. Oh, no, we're behind. This is an absolutely unparalleled experience. Walk onto the set and you see the people giving uh, flesh and blood to your words. It's, it's, it's just wonderful. I've been trying to sort of stay away a little bit. John might get nervous that we're around too much. It's, it's his vision now, so. Having writers on your set is really indispensable. Things change all the time. With a guy like John, whose style is largely improvisational, if you don't have the writers on hand, you could be shooting yourself into a big, big disaster. Michelle. Hi. Hi. So I just called Mark Wahlberg's manager. He's not gonna do the movie. Okay. We'll figure out who we're going to go out to and call you back. All right. It's kind of a race to the finish line now. In, in order for John to make his day, he's got to stay focused and get through these shots. I mean, I mean, I mean doll, try, dolly back to and look. look. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Can we do one where we don't, we don't actually pull back or just stay up tighter? Uh, I don't know what you mean. Once the DP has set up a shot, any little change has a huge impact. And that sets you behind schedule. All right, stop. Okay. Let's relight this. I get embarrassed sometimes when I try to explain what I want. Everybody's kind of looking at me with a little cockeyed attitude. So I, I guess that's something I, I, should, I get, should get over and just say what I need. Quiet, please. And action. OK, guys, we're moving on. We really wanted a name to play the role of hero. And once Mark Wahlberg turned us down, the Maloofs mentioned Josh Dumel, who's on the TV show Las Vegas. Andrew. Hey, Mike. Hi. The role plays tomorrow. Can we get an answer? Assuming that his schedule permits, he'll show up uh, to be hero uh, tomorrow. Perfect. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, man. Bye. So we're waiting on that to, to, to drop. I think Josh is worth the wait. I'm just not sure it's going to close. So I hate to extend if we're really spinning our wheels. Boom the camera down. OK, guys, we're moving on. It's five to six, and we have another half hour left. 
And you. All right, well, that's the answer. Then I appreciate you uh, having your finger on the pulse here, and we did as much as we could. Josh Dumel. Unfortunately, because of his commitment on another show, he passed. Ideally, one of those would have worked out, but this is, this is a business, and people are busy. We're in a desperate situation now. If Eric Dane doesn't come through, we won't have a hero to shoot with tomorrow. We want to um, officially uh, honor our, uh, our offer to Eric and get him out here tomorrow to play hero. Oh, great. We'll be contacting him to get his measurements and uh, give him a call time. Eric Dane is hero. Unless Eric says, uh, you guys have waited too long. are moving on to scene three. Look straight into the lens. Cut. And that's a wrap. Thank you very much, everybody. We are basically on schedule, and we are cast. We inked Eric Dane to play Hero, and he will be here bright and early 6 a.m. to play that role. And we're excited. Tomorrow is the first of many big effects days to come, and we're all just a little bit nervous. If it doesn't go well, it's going to be a very bad omen for things to come. First and foremost, I think it needs to be repeated. We made our day, but where we lost time was getting all the way up to camera set, and then like, yeah, I don't think so. So I, I think there's just some concerns about that. John still learning his way through the process because when he comes in with new ideas after a shot's already been set up, it can slow the process down. When you see it going astray, to speak up sooner so that we don't waste the time getting it to last looks and then decide to change it all. Even though we've made our day and it's the first day, it's a great thing to do because usually the first day is when things go wrong. But at the end of the day, this is one of our easiest days. I, I, I think it's good. I'm glad we, uh, we, we made the day. What do you want me to say? We got everything shot. I don't know what, what everybody's problem is, actually. Maybe it's just the way producers are to kind of keep you on your toes. One down. 25 more to go. It's a good day, man. It's now day two. John made it to his first day pretty well by most standards. Today will be his toughest test. Today's the first day where we deal with special effects work, blood, stunts, things like that. Today is a real challenge because it involves some very sort of technical, complicated moves and, and, and uh, work. So we're very curious to see how it turns out. Okay, guys, just so we're aware, we need to be in scene 7, 3, sir, 28 um, before lunch to try and make our day today with all the stiff effects and stuff that we're going to be doing on Hero. So that's our big one today. After all the back and forth that went on yesterday, we we're very lucky to have Eric Dane to play the role of hero. My name's Eric Dane, I play the hero. I was on a television show called Gideon's Crossing. Feast is the first feature film that I've been a part of. No, I gotta get, I gotta get blood put on me. You want a little cut right there? Yeah. Sure. Is it? Rehearsing and action. I'm the guy that's gonna save your ass. And crash. And I need to be turned more this way. Here is the stereotypical element of hope for all these seemingly hopeless characters in a seemingly hopeless situation. So you is, you uh, need to play it for, you, for, the, for, right. the, for the hero part. We're making a monster movie here. I want to make sure the monsters... The monsters are coming. And action! Unless you people want to die, you'll do what I say and you'll do it fast. Listen to me. Storm of hell's coming down on this place any second. So here I am on my first visit to the set of Feast. How you guys feeling? I'm having some fun, actually, so far. And you know what? If Mike hasn't told you already. You look like you're impressed. You really can. You're doing all right? Yeah. My first impression of the whole vibe on set was that everybody's having a great time. John's actually looking very confident. You know, so far the shots have been really cool. So we don't know if it cuts, but it looks yeah, good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you had to come today, man. Yeah, I was doing good yesterday. <laughs> right, 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 right. You were. Everybody says you're doing great. I'm not coming out, right? How are you feeling? Yeah, that is good. So that was good that he came and he was he was feeling cheery, and so that that's kind of a good thing. We're moving on to our dummy shot. Blood sprays hitting honey pie. 
So what we're going to do next is a gag where we're splooging this tremendous stream of blood on honey pie. Repeating the gag is next to impossible. It has to work on the first try because we have to clean up all this blood and get honey pie in and out of wardrobe again. My name is Jenny Wade, and the character I'm playing is named Honey Pie. I'm excited for the of honey pie. I feel like someone's daring me to jump off a bridge or something. Gary and his effects team are crucial on this shot. Creature effects unit, we tend to shoot all the really cool shit, you know, we shoot the blood spraying out and people getting their heads pulled off, jaws being ripped out, eyeballs being eviscerated. All the stuff that makes people throw up is really what we do. Close, picture is up. Here we go, road sound and action. Here we go, 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 go. <laughs> I think our man's a director. So far, so good. You know I have to get you two. That's okay. It's just gonna get on the Honda, that's all. We finally got into the messy stuff. And, and that's kind of what the film's about. And uh, I was pretty thrilled. Come on, dude, it's so much fun. I'm so happy to be here. These are the moments we think. All those were all those stupid ass deals you gotta get closed. I was always the fan of this project, and it's exactly what I wanted to do, was go very fun, very commercial, very over the top, and I think it's going to work out great. Hey, yeah, you know, last year, group hug. Hey, Tom. This year, group shower. Hey, hey. I like that. <laughs> Thank you. I think the jury's still out. We have it. we got to see it, but I think in general, John is being a good director. I think he's taken all of the hard parts, you know, in stride. I'm still, uh, you know, trying to find my way. You know, you know every day's different. You, know, just, you know, try to make it through every day. I just hope it all, you know, cuts together somehow. <laughs> hey, thank you for I coming, man. Oh, it's awesome. my pleasure. Keep up and, with and, your and, work. Uh, you know, hey, well done. thanks for the whole thing. Well done, dude. Yeah. Keep it up, all right? All right. My name is Jules Sylvester. I'm a bug and snake wrangler. Today is maggots. It's a very hard job being a maggot wrangler. <laughs> the hardest part is separating the shavings from the maggots. Hey, are you Jules? Yes, sir. My name is Judah Friedlander. I'm playing Beer Guy. Those are the maggots? Yeah, this is them. Yeah, there's actually a wax one. I guess, what are you, dead or dying or about to die? Uh, or? No, I'm. Uh, what happened is uh, an alien monster pukes on me. Cool. And I slowly decompose throughout the whole movie. As far as I know, the maggots are going to be all, all in my hair and on my head today. Maybe we'll get some in the nose and the mouth, too. We'll see. And these are pretty cool. They're actually so a what grub. what do they do? They're just... They're a grub. They're pretty cool. In the scene we're about to shoot, John wants Judah's character to blow a maggot out his nose and hit the camera lens. It's something that we don't have a whole lot of faith that's going to work. What I thought is that like, if we had something on the lens... Well, no, but we got to figure out when he well, does well, we, so What you and I talked about was that we do one that's clean, clean in other words, so we're not going to have to be wiping the lens, and we've got it. Well, we got to do second yeah, takes. you got to know when, where he's doing it. I, I think you need to have a plan first, and I think that's one of our problems. We don't always know what we're doing. Ah, ah, you know. He's aiming at this camera. Yeah, but someone should probably be there to, to get a little, boom, extra little From that thing distance. on it. Anything that John brings up that's new to the team not only slows us down because then you have to deal with it, but 
I think takes a lot of wind out of the sails of Tom, the DP. Which right, camera? Which camera? Are you doing? I'm saying it's this camera right here. Okay. That's what, okay. We, in the rehearsal, we never did it. And everyone's getting really uptight because um, no one's really sure how to do this because everyone thought it was like a stupid idea. When does he do it? So we know where to put the guy and all that stuff. Wait, so it doesn't just happen on can his own. Do it yeah, no, the straw. Sometimes like time's a little short with me, and uh, you know I don't like that sort of thing. These guys are not connecting. Everybody in the room could sense it. That this is going to be a friction point. Well, it came out. Yeah, it slides out when you do. Yeah, that. that's the thing. Okay, guys, we're getting very close here. Stand by. <laughs> Lock it up and roll down. If we get it, we get it. Wider and pan left. Action. Okay. Ah! All right. Not gonna ah! okay, okay, cutting. Moving All right. on. The maggot scene really screwed us up today, and that should have been something that was very easy to do. Okay, guys, that is lunch. Yeah. I don't know what your thoughts are about me lunch with Tom and Holly, that, because that's my biggest, like, I'm, yeah. I'm sitting back just watching um, it, mm -hmm. Sorry, and I, uh, no, I'm not pointing any fingers, you? but I just, yeah, yeah, the sorry. dynamic of you two yeah, I just, I was wondering should be in what, sync what, for us to succeed, and it's just not. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know, what do you want to do? I mean, that's, we're going to succeed if we fix that. And if we don't fix it, we're not going to succeed. John, come over here a second. You gotta be like this. I like I like to be kind of here, but well, it's just that wall is the worst wall. No, because you know, we'll just be up right tight. It won't really be on the wall per se. Well, Tom, would you like to come come like around this way or, or well, that I, way? I don't care, but we just we didn't talk about that and, before. We yeah. talked about cutting to the cigarette to her, but we can do it. But just gotta okay. let me know because now it changes everything what we're doing. You might as well. Like last second, we're ready to roll, and the director says, "No, I want to look over this way." Well, suddenly half my lights are in the shot. People think, "Oh, you just moved the camera over," but most of the time it doesn't work that way because you're pretty much lit for just one angle at a time, and it can be very frustrating. Where do I start? Where's the camera looking when we start out? Back where we were. No, I mean, I mean back. You know. Now we're moving this. Which way are we going, guys? <laughs> well, you, I thought you made the move. I thought that was you making yeah, the move. Yeah, this is the this is one. The director comes in, you got a director of photography. Now there's a blurring between the lines between the two of them as far as creativity. And John is very visual in what he wants. The way he wants to frame things, block things, it's different than what you normally see. The thing about changing the shots, everybody gets really upset with me. But I think that how do you know what the shot is until, until you do set it up and see it the way it's working? And if you had to change it, I don't think that should be an issue. Sometimes I think everybody's kind of overreacting because of the 15 minutes it takes to fight about it, you know, probably would have been fixed. Track back, because on the, behind the ketchup bottle. That's all I'm saying, I don't know. Let's go to two, <clears throat> which is now one. John's biggest issue was communication, by far. And, but when he, when he trusts somebody, he can communicate. Set. And action. You can see it as, okay, this guy doesn't know what he wants. And a lot of people think that about John, but John knows exactly what he wants. He just can't get it out. And cut. Okay, we're moving on, moving on to scene 10A. I get my feelings hurt a lot. And, and I, guess, I guess you're not supposed to, but when people don't kind of trust your, your judgment or your values, it hurts my feelings. And action. Wait, that's the little one? Are you kidding me? We, we can't fight these things, no way. We have to fight these things. We're just gonna have to be clever about this. Okay, cutting. Let's slate it. I thought you wanted it, like, silent for a second and then go. So I don't know if I'm, like, spending too long there no. or what. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what do you want me to do? <laughs> okay. I want to be able to trust my director and know that I'm completely safe. I want you to do what you just did. Okay. And, but, but when you finish, mm -hmm. I just want you to just back up. Right, fine. I didn't know what we were doing, and, and it was a different process than I'm used to. We've already seen that John's having some difficulty communicating his vision to the crew. We're also starting to see that he's having some difficulty communicating that vision to the actors as well. If you want to, if you want to sit on the stairs, you can do that, but what, what else could you do? It's just it's not a big place. I'm just not connecting with the actors like I wish I would. I'm not the most aggressive person as far as like uh, sort of bonding with people. 
you know, I'm pretty uncomfortable um, with any kind of, you know, human interaction. Both time. I don't understand what I'm supposed to do. And action. <laughs> Navi, look over here for a second. Where is here? A shot broke down so badly that the actor just looked up and said, what am I supposed to do next? That never happens. That's just like made us all feel like we were just in a major Bush League situation. Look back okay. towards the bar. Back to the hand. Cut it not, there, guys. Yet. I think there's a good chance where if I'm not in the script specifically saying or doing something, they're not going to get to me because there's, there's a lot to cover, you know? So. It's a good rule. Since the movie takes place in a bar, a lot of the shots require the actors to be in the background of each other's shots. So they can't leave. They have to be there all day. Thankfully, they've been very patient because of this, but it's, you can tell they're kind of bored. So you get to go home? Yeah, you know, buddy. All right, I'll see, see you tomorrow. tomorrow. We're doing a scene where uh, my, my face gets ripped off. I never had makeup like this, never done a horror movie. They put the makeup on, but I mean, we might not do it now. We might not get to the scene because now it's quarter to six, and I believe wrap time is six, and I know they don't like to pay crews overtime. It's lots of money. Heroin that we can use, you know, it's, and, and it's tighter, you know, and widescreen. Okay, straight away, guys. Pictures up, lock it up. Set. And. That be a question? Yeah, what about that light? Just let it go. When John gets into areas that are action orientated, he doesn't have a command of what he wants. And in action sequences, you need to have a very strong idea of what you want to achieve on it. And. Action. Cut. Okay, that, that had some problems. Okay, that's a wrap. Well, it's a little quick, huh? Okay, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Call seats, get your call seats. People are starting to resent when they come in and don't work. Jason, who hadn't really <coughs> been in anything all day, and they put him in an hour worth of prosthetic. And that's the kind of stuff that's just, you know, we've got to manage that better. I felt it was absolutely imperative at that point to talk about the gross inefficiencies that we were displaying. I called a meeting on set where it's like, guys, this is no way to make a movie. We did a great job and we also did a very piss poor job. And it's not John's fault, not your fault, not Steven's fault, and yet it still happened and so we can't have it. Essentially, my concern is that we didn't use half of our cast today. You know, I sat down with pencil and paper and we basically wasted 5,000 bucks. When we don't shoot them, that's 5,000 bucks. That's just incredibly poor management on our part. We shouldn't be leaving the set without knowing what we're doing in the morning. Part of that falls on Steven, but part of it doesn't because we don't know what we're trying to shoot in the morning. Ben is just really frustrated because now he's got all these actors coming in when they're not needed and it, and it costs money and they're sitting around and they're not shooting and he's paying for them. It makes us look like we don't have a clue. We just can't have everybody all the time. I had to kind of lay down the law like, guys, we either have to use these people or let them go. It's, pol it's the politically correct thing to do, it's considerate to our actors and it's gonna help the movie. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Nice break time. It's our fifth day on the set and there's a lot of tension to overcome. Yesterday the cast and crew were feeling that John wasn't communicating well and were becoming very frustrated. She was camera right. Probably right, right there. John just seemed morose. So I asked Diana's wife what she thought about John's state of mind. How did he feel? Oh. He seemed a little down. He felt, you know, that aesthetically, um, he was being fought by the camera crew. And I got that sense right away. They aren't necessarily in his corner. He had some problems with the camera department as far as getting what he wanted. I don't think that they really trust him yet. 
I don't think people uh, believe that it's going to work, and I don't think they like his way of shooting. Diane certainly confirmed my worst fears. I think the situation between Tom and John is either going to get better real quick, or it's going to get a whole lot worse. So this could become an issue that just not only compromises the movies aesthetically, look, but keeps it from getting our day. John is an extremely sensitive guy, probably to a fault, but that's who he is and um, part of what makes him special. Can Tretch fall more like honor? Huh? It'd be great to have a, have a run-up, you know, on it. He's standing right there, and I can't get much, because he's, yeah. he's right next to him. The goal here is to get John to stay focused, stay on schedule, and get through his day any way he can. There's got to be some way we figure out when we're doing this stuff and when we're not. Why die with, like, like, with action? And... We can't do all these wide shots that way. Just We don't have the lights or the time to do it. Yeah. I think the communication has just got to be more clear for everybody. John's got to figure out what he wants to shoot, and he's got to do it much faster than he's doing now. Give me some action! What are we averaging a turnaround? You know, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 45 half hour? Hours. Yeah, we're about a half hour per setup. We had people asking questions that should be asked when we first start to set up a shot, like, who's going to be in this shot? Where's Beer Guy? right now. I think John came in with a specific way or ideas of what he wanted to shoot, and as soon as we veer off it, we seem to lose him. What do you want after this shot? We've got this shot. I'm going to this out. Harry, just give me a second here. Please, just stop interrupting, and I just find you can have whatever you want afterwards. There's got to be ways to suck time out of this day. Just keep pushing them to work fast. Filmmaking is a logistical enterprise. You absolutely, positively have to have a plan when you go in, or you're just wasting money. Oh, day one. Uh, wow. How smooth. Here, on Hot Wheels. Today, I think we've only actually completed one, maybe two scenes. We got more than half the, the work just in the afternoon. Hopefully, we'll get to. But I doubt it. You have to understand that the last time we guys got here, I was here for nine hours before you guys shot me. And I just don't want that to happen. No, we don't want it to happen either. I have to go to the bank, I have to go to my landlord, pay my rent, I like stuff I have to do. If I'm needed, then I'll stay, but if you're not sure, I'd really rather go. Yeah. I've never had this kind of experience. I feel like an extra. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, well. A non-important extra. Exactly. <laughs> it's just been a lot more standing around and waiting than I have ever done before, you know. Have you done anything today? Nothing. Yeah. But when Eileen comes and she's, you know, up at 4.45. That's your director, is what that is. You can't just leave actors sitting around. Not only is it annoying for actors to wait around and not get shot, it's very expensive because they get paid for every second they're on set, whether we use them or not. Guys, can, can I just grab everybody just outside for oh, a few yeah. minutes, just have a quick chat with you guys? Oh, outside? Oh. Yeah. And you guys are frustrated. You can see that we're frustrated. I think is we're all in here for the same thing at the end of the day, which is to get this made and try and get the best thing out of it. I know this conversation isn't traditional, but we're not dealing with something that is straightforward. Like, what can you guys do and what can we do? John and the whole kind of DP crew, there seems like a lot of friction yeah. right there. And it's, I feel like it's kind of affecting the mood on the set a little bit. Sometimes you don't know what you're doing. A lot of times we're coming in, uh, I mean, it's about to roll, and I literally don't even know what scene's being done. I just felt like I couldn't let another day go by like this because, you know, it doesn't help John and doesn't help the production. I think John's depending more on a lot of what you guys are bringing. Just try and nail him with specific questions as soon as you come in. The more specific you are, the more controllable John is, what he wants to do with you guys. And guys, I appreciate We're it. We're ready for a camera rehearsal, guys. Yeah, let's talk, boys. We had a meeting with Joel, Nick, myself, and Jim Glander. Essentially, I kind of had to relay to them what the crew frustrations were, uh, the actors, and what I saw as the problems. Just said, hey, look, guys, we've got to get control of this. For the first time, I'm starting to get scared that he's really in over his head. This is really pathetic. Yeah. I've never experienced anything like this. I really think there's a sense that it's at a certain point today that it was almost chaos there. I mean, is Eileen here? Eileen is here. Do we have anything on her with all this stuff going on? Guys, these people have been here all Is Eileen, Eileen gonna go through another day and not get shot? 
No, not if I have anything to say about it. There are a lot of people who are frustrated with John. Some, some people are even angry with him. We cannot send this left half the bar home without shooting them today. Only John at this point knows how he's putting this movie together in his head, and that causes problems of making our days. Okay, pictures up. Okay, suddenly the beast, the beast comes in. Action. We've still got half of our day's work to do. We'll finish up three to four hours away from where we should have. Does that look about right? Okay, right. guys, here we go. Action! I was hoping that we'd be getting a little bit more footage, you know, because I know it looks great. I would rather have, you know, more. I'm not really that worried about being over, you know, but I know Steven is. I'm not worried. You should be worried. Are we going to have a meeting? Yeah. yeah. Right now, it's uh, quarter to seven. We have 15 minutes to schedule wrap. I think that they are not going to make their day. Uh, no, you've got until 8.15. Okay. So, get what you can get. Let's take a walk. No, I, you know, I'm, I'm already tired of the drama. We haven't known any day what we're shooting in the morning. Tom is not any closer than day one to John. I mean, they're further apart than they've ever been, I think, as far as just frustration. It's up to, to Joel and Mike to lay down the law and say, OK, John, this is the version you are going to get. I know, can I also get Diane in here? Then, you know, we should take a shot and just get on the ground. You know how you're going to fall on your leg? Pictures up. Dead gut stuff. Okay. It's the leg coming apart. The leg didn't go. Was it because it was waiting? No, because it's waiting for a second shot. Okay, how long? Just gotta load the gun and go. Right, load and go. Okay, here we go. Let's lock it up. Action! That's a wrap. That whole last take was exemplary of kind of a problem. Yep. No one knew what was going on. I was frustrated as well because I want a team that's in sync. I want a team that's fighting the good fight together. And I'm scratching my head wondering why we don't have it. Well, okay. how, how, do you, how do you guys feel today when it, in this, this, this side of the room? Do you feel... Got it or no? Not? No. Okay. We had a meeting on the HP trailer, and, and the big thing was to do what we didn't make our day. It looks like there's a just a basic lack of coherent communication between all the department heads. We called in on the carpet about not getting things done and not making the day. There's no planning for setup or execution or, or where it fits. And we did all those storyboards, you know, and, and I don't know if anybody looked at them. You know. so I didn't really say much, just listened. It's a sad day in Gulagerville. Uh, things aren't working out right. We need to find out how everything kind of connects. You right. just put your finger on the absolute problem. That's, that's sinking us as we're rehearsing shots and not seeing right. us. One of the most important things to come out of this meeting was to impress upon John that without a rehearsal, nobody knows what's going on. I'm hearing a lot from just chat on the set. I'd know what to do if I was rehearsed. All these actors or whatever is in the scene needs to be blocked and rehearsed with all department heads. And then all you guys know what to do and we can do it. Hopefully there'll be a lesson or two learned today. I, I do think John can get us get through this, but it requires some big changes to take place very, very fast, and we're not talking about when the next week, we're talking about the next few days. As far as working in the studio system right now, it looks like I'm having a bit of a problem with it. Um... Awesome. Great, guys. <laughs> now get back to work. You know, Kirk Moore, he's the editor of Feast, and he's coming to the set. He's strung together uh, some scenes from the first week of shooting. It's called Rough Assembly. I've never looked at anything like this. I've never looked at anything that that I've worked on that someone else has put together. No, I'm not saying I ever had it, but I definitely lost it. Yeah, I think I almost caught it. You know, you know what I mean? Like how you can like almost get the flu, but you don't. 
I think I almost caught BD, but I didn't. Man, this is long, huh? I thought the pacing was really slow. I just got kind of worried that it might not work. Ouch. What's your thoughts? Yeah. Make it a little more exciting, you know? I was really worried, very worried. I just fell into a funk. Do you want to go through it again and talk about some stuff? No. I think I want to go home. Okay. I just felt that, that I had just sent everything in a, in a bad direction. I'm going to have to find a way to fix it. John is not enjoying this opportunity. He's feels humiliated and embarrassed. You're doing good, John. Everyone likes what you're getting, babe. Nobody wants you to shut down. I know, it's hard, but you can't, like, think that, like, you can't do it just because it's hard. You can do it. I just get frightened. I just feel like like a complete failure. I just get embarrassed in front of everyone. I know. I, I just feel like that this my style is just not cohesive right now. No, no, it's fine. No, I mean, it's everything not looked fine. good, you know. No, it's not fine. I'm full of self-doubt, and um, I don't know. I watched it, and I just, all I could think is just, I, I, uh, you know, I let everybody down. Next week on Project Greenlight. We need to start shooting something straight away. I don't know how you do it, uh, what Tom. Do you want to just, see? just. What do you want to see? John doesn't really tell you what he wants. I was guessing all the time, setting up the shots. If it can't be done, just say it can't be done. It's not a big deal. Nobody told you. Someone needs to. Someone needs to ask me or tell me. I know, but you're the AD. What we talked about last night is suddenly started becoming a problem again. Let, let us work, Stephen. Okay. We're trying to work this motherfucker. Wow. Don't interfere with the director when he's conferring with an actor. And Dad? Stop interfering with the actor and the director. <laughs> Damn it! Dad? What the f***'s the matter with you? Dad? How are we going to make our day? I'm not, it's an honest question. I don't know. You know, it didn't matter, you know, what I wanted to do. So they should just get their, get their thing and go ahead and do it. John, we just need to talk to you about the coverage here for Krista. Just, just handle it. What? Just, just do it. What, what? Just do it. Whatever the f*** you want to do. What do you want, man? He's gonna be up to bat if the big gun doesn't work out. We need a hero like yesterday. Actually, four days ago would have been perfect. I've got wardrobe on my tail. I have a dummy body that matches the size and shape of somebody we hire. The glamorous world of movie making. Nothing but constant action and fun here, man. It's quite nerve wracking right now. Rosa. Very quiet, guys. Pictures up. Let's start getting last looks, please. Keep rolling. Reset. Ready? <coughs> and action. Cut. Okay. Good. I kind of like, like that second one. Bathroom floor with a gun. Hey, who can ask for more? Okay, guys, we're moving on. Dan. Good. The only backup we have for Hero if Mark Wahlberg doesn't play this part is Eric Dane. Hello, Michelle Gertz. Um, Eric Dane's agent manager are really pissed. They found out that we're investigating the possibility of Mark Wahlberg, and so now we might not have Eric Dane to play Hero, and then we'd have nobody. Granted, Eric knows that he's not Mark Wahlberg, but it's still, it's an ego thing. I don't know how that got that far. I thought I was told to make him an offer. And then an hour later, it's like, wait, Mark Wahlberg. This hero thing is f screwed. You never want to go out to an actor with an offer unless it's firm. And now we're in a position of possibly losing our backup. Somehow, some way, it's not going to end up pleasantly for someone. No, I'm sorry, it's a mess. So we're just really in a spot right now, basically. 
Bye. I'll call you back. All right. Bye. We have no one. Rolling point, please. Action. And cut. And cut. How is that junk? Okay, that's lunch. Yeah, we're like an hour behind, right? There's something I heard. I think you're completely on time, I've heard. Oh, no, we're behind. This is an absolutely unparalleled experience. You walk onto the set and you see the people. Oh, but this is this is a business and people are busy. We're in a desperate situation now. If Eric Dane doesn't come through, we won't have a hero to shoot with tomorrow. We want to um, officially uh, honor our uh, our offer to Eric and get him out here tomorrow to play hero. Oh, great. We'll be contacting him to get his measurements and uh, give him a call time. Eric Dane is hero. Unless Eric says, uh, you guys have waited too long. OK, guys, we're moving on to scene three. Look straight into the limbs. Cut. And that's a wrap. Thank you very much, everybody. We are basically on schedule and we are cast. We inked Eric Dane to play Hero, and he will be here bright and early 6 a.m. to play that role. And we're excited. Tomorrow is the first of many big effects days to come, and we're all just a little bit nervous. If it doesn't go well, it's going to be a very bad omen for things to come. First and foremost, I think it needs to be repeated. We made our day, but where we lost time was getting all the way up to camera set, and then like, yeah, I don't think so. So I, I think there's just some concerns about that. John still learning his way through the process because when he comes in with new ideas after a shot's already been set up, it can slow the process down. When you see it going astray, to speak up sooner so that we don't waste the time getting it to last looks and then decide to change it all. Even though we've made our day and it's the first day, it's a great thing to do because it's your first day when things go wrong. But at the end of the day, this is one of our easiest days. No, I, I think it's good. I'm glad we, uh, we, we made the day. What do you want me to say? We got everything shot. I don't know what, whatever his problem is, actually. <laughs> Maybe it's just the way producers are to kind of keep you on your toes. One down. 25 more to go. It's a good day, man. It's now day two. John made it through his first day pretty well by most standards. Today will be his toughest test. Today's the first day where we deal with special effects work, blood, stunts, things like that. Today is a real challenge because it involves some very sort of technical, complicated moves and... and that the actors are in front of the camera at a specific time and that the day's work is complete. Okay, guys, we're gonna try a rehearsal here. Right, try it right now. Careful, some of the set dressing there, Diane. Drop the gun. First thing we're shooting today is Harley Mom in the bathroom getting ready to rob the bar. Diane's the very first shot that could help alleviate some of the nerves. And I also want to get a um, smoking, a lighting, a crack pipe kind of thing. We have a crack pipe? <clears throat> By now. OK. If not, I got one in my car. Good. Yeah. It's day one of principal photography. Showed up on set to a little surprise already. And apparently now there's a crack pipe component to this. Mm -hmm. Is there a problem with drugs? There's a problem with drugs, and there's also a problem in not knowing that before we actually start the day. That would be, you know, an interesting, you know, kind of, you know, sort of cinema thing, you know. So I didn't think it was a big deal. You see, it can't just come up on the day because the schedule's built. There's a little improvisation that goes into every film, but on a schedule like this, improvisation is a very scary prospect. Putting a crack pipe into the scene is not just a worry to the studio, it's a challenge for props. It's not something you want to drop on production without warning on day one. So what is she going to be smoking? Any idea? How about if we do both? Like take a take with the pot and, and a take with the crack. Hey, that's good, We'd have it in the editing room. One day. condition, John. We're going to make our day. Make sure we can just swap it in. Right. And swap it up. And do not 
up the take no with, with, the with the pot. Yeah, and like shake the camera. No sabotage. No, I, don't, I don't do that. It's like already the give and take. Quiet, please. Pictures up. Roll sound and action. I think it's probably going to get worse, but we said, OK, this is going to be a big test for John. Can he add shots? Can he change up his, his plan and still make his day? OK, I'm cutting. Stand by. You guys are moving on. Do we need a shot of the door? Are we going to do I that? I think or? we should pick the door up later. We're in deep doo-doo. We're shooting the hero character in less than 24 hours. We don't have anyone definite, but we're pursuing Mark Wahlberg. What do we need to do to resolve this hero issue? He is on a flight and apparently lands in New York at 12.30 our time. Perfect. In the meantime, we've got this Eric Dane. If you want to see his tape, it's in the other room. We picked a backup choice, uh, Eric Dane, who was not a choice I was entirely comfortable with. And he knows he... Project Greenlight is an internet contest. We pick a script, we pick a director, we let somebody get a chance to make their movie. This time we want to make a horror movie. Feast is a very scary movie. It's Evil Dead meets Diner. This year we have a fantastic director, John Gulliger. It's been over 35 years getting here. Hopefully he's going to pay off. Now it's up to Marcus, Patrick, and John to make a terrific movie. It's a first day of shooting, and basically everything's been leading to this day. I'm gonna find out myself after the first day uh, how exhilarating or disappointing it is. That's always kind of the test. It's like the first day of school. Is this script even possible to pull off in 25 days? I would be the last person to, to tell you what's possible. I'm the person that hasn't done it before. All right, let's go. people show up at a stage in Silmar with all eyes turned to John Gulliger. It's pretty much a disaster if you don't finish what you set out to shoot on the first day. You, you're sort of just thinking about the first shot. You know, you actually have to you know, accomplish a certain amount of work. Well, today's the day. Don't f*** it up. <laughs> yeah. I did feel the weight of how much work it's going to be with the effects um, and the time we have. I have to shake their hand at least once this morning. Before you slap me? Before I slap you. <laughs> We're up against this unreasonable schedule. And my big fear is that John just isn't used to working with any deadlines. I'll be yelling at you all day. Yeah. Hurry up, but hurry up. Knock him dead, dude. My name is Ben Ormond, and I'm the line producer on Feast. Ultimately, my job is about making sure we make days. We scheduled our work and that we get our work done. Because the only way you can make a movie. One of the things that's nerve-wracking for a director on that first day is knowing that you are the guy that they're looking to to see if you're a leader, to see if you're if you if you, if you got the stuff. Our shot, a gun falls on the ground. Second, picks, picks it up. That's it. The assistant director's job is to make sure giving uh, flesh and blood to your words is it's, it's just wonderful. I've been trying to sort of stay away a little bit. John might get nervous that we're around too much, and it's it's his vision now. So having writers on your set is really indispensable. Things change all the time. With a guy like John, whose style is largely improvisational, if you don't have the writers. On hand, you could be shooting yourself into a big, big disaster. Michelle. Hi. Hi. So I just called Mark Wahlberg's manager. He's not going to do the movie. Okay. We'll figure out who we're going to go out to and call you back. All right. It's kind of a race to the finish line now. In, in order for John to make his day, he's got to stay focused and get through these shots. I mean, I mean, I mean doll, try, dolly back to, and look. look. That's what I'm saying. Uh, okay. Can we do one where we don't, we don't actually pull back or just stay up tighter? Uh, I don't know what you mean. Once the DP has set up a shot, any little change has a huge impact. And that sets you behind schedule. All right, stop. Okay. Let's relight this. I get embarrassed sometimes when I try to explain what I want. Everybody's kind of looking at me with a little cockeyed attitude. So I, I guess that's something I, I, should, I get, should get over and 
just say what I need. Quiet, please, and action. Okay, guys, we're moving on. We really wanted a name to play the role of hero. And once Mark Wahlberg turned us down, the Maloofs mentioned Josh Dumel, who's on the TV show Las Vegas. Andrew. Hey, Mike. Hi. The role plays tomorrow. Can we get an answer? Assuming that his schedule permits, he'll show up uh, to be hero uh, tomorrow. Perfect. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, man. Bye. So we're waiting on that to, to, to drop. I think Josh is worth the wait. I'm just not sure it's going to close. So I hate to extend if we're really spinning our wheels. Boom, the camera down. OK, guys, we're moving on. It's five to six, and we have another half hour left. Andrew. All right, well, that's the answer, then. I appreciate you uh, having your finger on the pulse here, and we did as much as we could. Josh Dumel. Unfortunately, because of his commitment on another show, he passed. Ideally, one of those would have worked 